So these things actually were genuine techniques. Huh. What a weird show Dragon Ball is. Hey folks, Masako X here. Let's be real, Dragon Ball isn't an entirely serious show. Granted, the way that we've seen Dragon Ball Z over the years and it being portrayed, it does give off a vibe of being a purely fighting anime with little time for comedy save for some moments which don't make sense in a western way, but it was conveyed as much more intense and stern than the original source material from Japan. This was done to appeal to western markets and that is also true with the techniques. Sometimes you can get some very goofy moves and powers which seem very jarring when you're not used to the original content, if one wasn't au fait with the original double script. Then of course, there are times when a character does something that you think is just a regular action or a plot device, but you then find out either through supplemental material or through video games later on that that's what you saw. That was an actual technique that the character or characters have. Over the years, we've made a few top 10 lists with the coolest techniques, the weakest techniques, or the downright weirdest techniques going within the anime and manga. And the list we are showing you today is certainly on the weirder side of things, in that these entries are sort of debatable as to whether they are movesets or techniques in the first place. You see, in traditional anime fashion, even the most mundane of actions can be turned into a martial arts technique, with characters traditionally just screaming its name and then the whole thing being accompanied by overly bombastic music to make you all pumped up and excited, as well as the visuals to signify moments of inspirational drama. It really makes you excited and you want to see what is going to be the outcome of said move. That's why today's list is going to be dubbed 10 Dragon Ball techniques that you probably didn't know were techniques at all. Yeah, okay, it is kind of long, so we're probably going to be shortening this in post, but anyway, you know what the gist of the video is now. Short disclaimer before we begin though, we are of course aware that a lot of things being considered a technique are due to the sheer amount of existing Dragon Ball video games that wanted to, well let's just say add certain character gimmicks to their rosters for their more mechanical spectrums because there might not have been enough to really diversify different characters because they were almost like palette swaps so these sort of actually added to the pool? And that's all fine and good but it doesn't take away from the hilarity of the situation that you can get some characters just shouting a phrase and that being the main constituent of the technique. Yeah, there is plenty of that going on here. Just keep in mind we know that we are laughing at some technicalities here, but what can we say? It's just fun! There's no particular order either, as they're all pretty bonkers in their own right, and we just wanted an excuse to share the weirdness with you all. So let's start off with number 10, the Ginyu Force poses. We start with something relatively tame, and something that I reckon you all can get behind. Of course, you know that all that posing and dancing is the thing of our favourite band of galactic misfits, but other than them being rather flashy, looking rather dashing, and basically just being stretching exercises in the way for the various Cold Force squadrons to assert dominance, do remember that the cooler armoured squadron did this too. All of these theatrics serve a genuine and meaningful purpose actually being most often presented as supporting moves, especially in the Budokai Tenkaichi series as well as fighters to some extent, which can either provide good buffs for characters or a little bit of further damage. In the Xenoverse series you can learn these dance moves from the great Saiyaman 1 and 2, as well as Ginyu himself, as they give you a plethora of helpful effects, outside of making you look like a member of some Super Sentai group or something like that. Now this category also includes both the happy dance and the special happy dance, which is just precious in terms of a name and I reckon that after you enact these moves, you too will be happy with the resulting perks. Though with all the puns Toriyama and the authors of expanded Dragon Ball Universe lore love, it does seem to be a missed opportunity that we have yet to see over the years the arrival of the safety dance. Oh well, maybe someday. Or might we have to do it ourselves in a what if? Number 9. Pokopen. We go into more detail about this whole ordeal in our Namekian guide video from last month, but number 9 on this list is, well, just spitting out an egg. That's the move. This one is pretty old as well, dating way back to OG Dragon Ball, where we saw King Piccolo giving birth to drum, tambourine, cymbal, all that, and then of course later Junior, the latter being more of a final burst of power in their final moments, the true perfect clone. Sometimes, the way in which the Cell Juniors came into being is thought as a variation of this, but 
yeah, we don't want to think too much about that in any detail, as you might be eating something while watching this video. The weirdest thing about Polka Pen, though, is that Dragon Ball Online has got an entire spec sheet based on this concept called Poco Priests. They literally use it to create summons that do their bidding. Yeah, summoning through egg. They did what King Piccolo did and made it so you can hatch minions when you want. I think we though prefer the more traditional way of summoning creatures from other planes of existence rather than... Well, let's move on. Number eight. Ah, Lord Frieza and ah, Lord Beerus. Now, since both of these techniques have the same outcome, we're going to be lumping them into the same spot on this list. In the world of Dragon Ball, even the good old, hey, look behind you, can be a technique with viable results. We all, of course, remember Kui trying to trick Vegeta and then quickly regretting it. And after that, there was the Beerus variation that was actually debuted in the case of being reincarnated as Yamcha. We wouldn't have mentioned these two had it not been for the fact that both of these variations have made it into one of our favorite Dragon Ball games of all time. Dragon Ball Fusions. The R Lord Freezer cancels an action of a single opponent, whilst the Beerus one cancels all actions. Ironically, due to some mechanical jiggery pokery stuff from the game, you can actually use the technique on Beerus himself, which is hilarious. What? What? What's this about me? What? Though with all the multiple timelines going on in that game, to be fair, maybe it's not that weird after all, but it's still funny. Number seven, Pop Belly Attack. I mean, it's a weird list already, of course Boo's gonna be here. This is basically Boo using his belly as a weapon by either detaching a piece of himself and using it as a mallet, or outright throwing a piece of his belly at an opponent to ensnare them so they can't go anywhere. Margin Vegeta was on the receiving end of this attack, and let me tell you, it did not lead to a fortunate story for the prince. It may look more traditional than the other techniques that we've talked about so far, but knowing that this is part of Boo's standard arsenal, and indeed a literal part of his actual body, that is rarely mentioned afterwards actually feels sort of accurate and adequate. Oh yeah, also margin player characters in Xenoverse 2 can do this as well. Dietitians just hate those margins. They found one simple solution on how to lose weight. Click below to find out how. Number six, Miracle Neil. And of course, Boo could not fall far away from his best buddy, Hercule. You see, when he's pretending to be suffering from all those bad, really bad stomach aches and pains, of course, that mean he can't fight anymore, he's actually being strategic. How clever that mark is. The Xenoverse series actually plays this up quite nicely by giving Mr. Satan, or the future warrior, the player character, who has obtained said skill, an extra evasive skill. Miracle Neil is an even stronger version that renders the user with temporary invincibility. Yeah, it's genuinely useful. So remember, Hercule's not your standard coward. He's only just using a very refined technique. I'm sure that was the intention Toriyama had when he came up with the character. Sure. Number five. Yeah, that's self-explanatory. Another gag that fusions turned into a full-on battle technique as poor Ten Shinhan has to literally power up to try and make King Kai laugh. And there isn't much else to talk about here, but just look how determined Yamcha and Uzma are over here when they're shouting out this aged pun. It's just precious. Essentially, it can power down one enemy that is subjected to the joke. Sort of like the killer joke from Monty Python, only dialed down a little bit. Also, while we usually associate this technique with the Triclops, it was actually Yamcha who told them the joke to begin with. Also, their fusions Tiencha and Yamhan can use it. Nice touch. Number four. Wahaha no ha. I mean, come on. The name itself is enough to make it onto the list. You guys remember Aka, right? Or Avocado in some versions? The fusion of Abo and Cardo? You know, from that jump special that never got a dub even though it should have done and it was shared online and stuff like that in 2008. Anyway, it's a beam attack that Aka charges in his hands, then brings it to his mouth and blows it up in the form of several powerful combat energy spheres. Now rarely do we see a mouth blast that starts up charged in the character's hands. Also, it alludes to your standard villain laugh, of course, in the name. One of the few techniques actually on this list that can be truly devastating when you use it right and looks sort of competent. Like you might genuinely want it in your roster. Number three, bad breath. Ah, Bacterian, you are truly a mine of weird, disgusting abilities, aren't you? Starting with your iconic smelly finger, but no, we're not going to be doing that because the finger is sort of obvious, so we chose to go with bad breath for this list, especially since Goldo's also been seen using it. Well, I mean, okay, not really, but he kind of needs to hold his breath to time freeze, so it probably is kind of bad smelling. But anyway, 
It's also worth noting that Upa used a variation of this against Fangs the Vampire, where it was called Garlic Breath. Seems like somebody had a bit too much Italian for dinner. Number two. Didn't think you'd fall for that! It wouldn't be a proper list, of course, without our boy, Raditz! This simple technique, which exploits Goku's main weakness, being off guard, is Raditz's signature ability in the game Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2. You thought Double Sunday was his thing, but oh no. Raditz is the only villain to truly know Goku's weakness, and he was not afraid to exploit it. Who knows where he could take this technique, if he was still alive? Hmm? Hmm? There are a lot of techniques that we've considered for this last slot of the list. Some not very YT friendly, such as like farting and stripping, both are classified as such, and some like dry skin stress, didn't really have much substance to warrant placement here. It was actually kind of gross, more than weird. But after looking through the list, we've decided to choose the oddity. Number one, leave my daddy alone. This is here for a couple of reasons. First, it's actually pretty effective, and really complicated Raditz's life by damaging his precious space armor. And while it has other names like Charge, Evil Ray Strike, or Quick Attack, Gohan, use Quick Attack! Those are boring, but the name we're going to be using here has it all, and sums up the move quite nicely. Also, it just sounds interesting. Just thinking that the video games have turned that emotional outburst by Gohan into a proper technique that you in theory could learn is hilarious on its own. And while it was a pretty defining moment for Gohan as a character, very few of us considered this a proper fighting move, but turns out it is. And not only that, Goten's capable of doing it too. It's sort of become like a thing that Goku's kids can pull off. Now, okay, this list is not meant to be taken super seriously, I think you know that, but rather to embrace the whimsical and silly nature of Dragon Ball, and how easy it is to create a new technique in this world that may not work in any other series because it's too farcical, but it fits so well here, in the world that Toriyama created. Most ideas that you could come up with would be compatible with at least one character in the dragon world. Seriously, you just need to shout something like, oh, I don't know, comfortable Christmas sweater or something like that, make some kind of weird pose and you're pretty much done. It is an old, bit tired anime trope, but for some reason it just still manages to make you laugh. But what do you folks think? What are your choices for this list? What are your favourite techniques? Do you think we'll ever get to see the safety dance in Dragon Ball? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!